Hi, Mr. Matusiak here again, and right now we're going to talk about electrons. Everything I talk about can also be referenced back to your chapter 4 in your book. Now, the way electrons behave is very different than what we have always been thought of. It's, it's, it's oversimplified if we think of it as just a ball or a marble rotating around or orbiting around a nucleus. There's a lot more going on than that. Electrons have this wave behavior. So if you were to pluck a guitar string or you to drop a pebble in a pond or play jump rope with somebody and you move that jump rope up and down, up and down to, to make that snake, uh, that would be your uh, wave pattern that we're talking about here. And if you're like me and there's no one around to jump rope with, you would just connect it to your refrigerator handle and then wait for the, you know, the dog to jump over it. Now, Again, when we talk about that wave behavior, that wave pattern, uh, there is it's in a loop, as you can see in the bottom right picture there. And so that wave pattern is occurring, but again, in a circular loop there. So let's talk about a few properties here. So the waves that we're talking about are called a transverse wave. All right? And they have the properties of amplitude, wavelength, frequency, and speed. So let's talk about those one by one. So amplitude. Amplitude is the height of the wave. And when you go up, that would be the crest. And when you go down, that would be the trough. And that would be from the midpoint there that is marked by the broken line crossing the screen there. Now wavelength, which is represented by lambda, uh, and remember what lambda means, okay? Because we're going to see that in our worksheets and we're going to see that in the lab as well. So the length of the wave is the distance between the two consecutive points of the wave. So you go from crest to crest, and that's your wave length. That's what we want to measure there. And we measure those in nanometers. And it, nanometer is very, very, very small. In fact, one nanometer is equal to 10 to the negative ninth meters. It's a lot of zeros uh, after that decimal before that non-zero number there. We also have frequency. The frequency is represented by the nu, or it looks like a V. And this is the number of waves that uh, that go uh, past a given point every second. And we measure this in waves per second, or also known as hertz. And you might have seen hertz on your uh, TV. Uh, you have to change the frequency of your TV to 60 hertz or 120 hertz. And we also see hertz when we're talking about radios, because all radio stations are frequencies. And so Z1077 is sending out 107.7 million waves every second. And 105.7 the point is sending out 105.7 million waves every second, or 105.7 uh, megahertz there. Now, the real question is, which one's going to send out good music? Parts of a wave, uh, such as speed here, is represented by C. And that's how fast that wave is moving. I mean, that's speed. That's easy. Now, we measure that in meters per second. And the waves that we'll be discussing will move at the speed of light. And that's 3.0 at times 10 to the 8th meters per, per second there. So those are the properties I want to talk to you about electrons and their behavior as well. The next video we're going to take a look at is electromagnetic, radi electromagnetic radiation and the electromagnetic spectrum.